Would you say that, that Cabernet Sauvignon is like the ultimate grape that you can utilize to produce a wine that will carry its ageability? Oh, I mean, listen, there are many other grape varieties around the world. So what makes Cabernet so special? <laughs> it grows really well <laughs> in Napa Valley. Hello, I'm Marcus Nataro. Uh, I'm a winemaker for Stag's Leap Wine Cellars in Napa Valley. And I'm here with AJ. Hello, I am AJ Ojeda Pons. I am a Diploma of Wine and Spirits with the WSET. Um, you're talking about uh, ageability on these wines, and I just wonder like, what makes uh, your site and what makes Napa Valley so special uh, to produce wines that have ageability. There's many different factors, I think, that give a wine the potential to be ageable, because not, you know, not every wine you know, is meant to be in the cellar for 30 years or, or 40 years. But certainly what I see in our area is that the wine, resulting wines do have that potential, and the site is really the key. You know, wine grapes, particularly red varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, they need both heat, you know, the, that's what brings out those nice ripe flavors, the nice complexity, the dark fruit flavors, but they also need a period of cooling, particularly at nighttime. So in our area, for example, uh, in Stag's Leap, we have this great combination. You know, back in the 60s when wine grapes were, Cabernet was being planted around, our area was thought to be too cold for Cabernet because the sea breezes that they come in through San Pablo Bay and it ha hits us around 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we have both mm -hmm. the heat, right, in the early afternoon, but we have this real extended cooling period as well. And I think that in our site gives the grapes then the potential to be made in a really ageable style. So AJ, how did you fall in love with wine? There was always wine present uh, in, in my family. Even at a young age, I learned to recognize what good wine was. And it was in a way like when my parents would take us out to dinner and my dad would order like bottles and I would started remembering names like Chateau Neuf du Pape or Puy Fuisse. So wine was kind of like present, but I never really showed much interest in it until I left like music school. And I started kind of like learning, learning more and starting buying more wine and tasting more wine. And then I decided this is something that I really wanted to do. That's when I decided to educate myself and, and enroll in the uh, WCT. You know, music is an important part of wine making. I so, heard there's music in the cellar. Especially, at, especially at you know, <laughs> especially during the harvest time, you know, I always feel like the yeast, you know, they're, they're what's doing the action, right? They're doing the fermentation. You gotta, you gotta keep them up, right? You gotta keep right. them lively. So we have a rule, no slow music during harvest. <laughs> gotta keep the yeast active, keep them happy. Well, you know, I always I think that winemakers are sort of like the uh, the conductors, you know, of an orchestra. I wanted to be an orchestra conductor, and I ended up like not going that way. But I feel like now I just kind of became more of a composer of wine by, by writing wine lists, you know. And every little wine on that wine list is kind of like the instrument that I need to have for it to work. So the same way I always kind of compare that to the winemakers, that they have to make all these decisions to like fine tune what ends up being in the bottle. That's a good, that's a good analogy, because <laughs> we do, we deal with farming, we do with the farming, the fermentation, the aging, and it is, uh, and it's just for wine in general, there's not a single component to it. If you you're know, missing one thing, there's no harmony. <laughs> exactly. So you, are there any other traditions that you have? Um, for instance, oh, like during harvest, what, what is that like? Listen, harvest is when it's all happening. I mean, our people are making the wine, right? You know, from harvest and to the cellars, it's a lot of long days. Uh, it's a lot of time away from family. And so for sure we have some, some goofy traditions. I mean, <laughs> Saturdays you wear your sports, you know, we're missing, we're missing watching the game at home. So you wear your favorite sports jersey to promote your team. And Fridays, it's fun wine Friday. That's when we break out a couple of bottles of other wines, maybe something that we're not totally working on, but you know, wine, great wines are made around the world and we want to taste them and learn and become, uh, and become educated. Harvest is a great time of year. Yeah, everybody thinks that like, harvest is like glamorous. You wake up at six o'clock in the morning and go pick up your grapes and it, it's, it's not quite like, like that. that. <laughs> it's not quite <laughs> like that. It's, a, it's one of those things that you could be at three o'clock in the morning picking grapes. But that's when, listen, that's what, that's what we do. You know, uh, every vintage is different. What do we have here today? Well, we have uh, our 2019 uh, vintage of our SLV single vineyard. So we have uh, two single vineyards there in Stag's Leap. We have the historic Fay Vineyard, which was the first vineyard planted to Cabernet Sauvignon back in 1961. And then the SLV or Stag's Leap Vineyard was the first vineyard that we planted in uh, 1970. And of course, it's a very historic uh, vineyard. It produced in 1973 the wine that won the Paris tasting 
uh, in 76 in Paris, France. The famous tastings that put Napa in the mouth. Exactly. <laughs> but this is our 2019 vintage. Wonderful. Um, shall we taste? Is well, why not? Yeah. Why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Indeed. I mean, so the, the, the wine has a beautiful aroma just jumping out of the glass of this beautiful ripe black fruits and uh, notes of like cocoa and chocolate and uh, sweet baking spices. And uh, it, it really is youthful in, in, indeed. Uh, and it just invites me to take a sip. Well, that, that cocoa, that is the personality of this vineyard. You see it in the older wines and you see yeah. it in the young wines. That's what we really try to try to capture. What I mean, you know, and also the, the, what I mean by black fruits here is all the all the berries, black berries, black currants, black plums also, you know, there's this beautiful uh, note of that and delicious. Much, much elegance in the palate. This beautiful acid is kind of like gives to really, really juicy and delicious. Makes me hungry. <laughs> Let's bring out the steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Why not?